Get over here! Ike and company managed to evade their persistent foes, finally arriving in Sien, the capital of Benyon. The Tower of Guidance. According to the creed of the goddess, which has been taught across the continent by Benyon, this is where the goddess Asherah will appear during times of great crisis to lead the people to safety. As even the smallest child in Benyon knows, the tower is sacred and mere mortals may not enter. With the world edging toward catastrophe, the tower glows like a pillar of pure light, as though to pierce the very heavens. We finally arrived. This is the beginning of the end. Yep. Don't think we're too close to the end, guys. Oh, there's, there's a lot to the end game. Yeah, it says <coughs> end game, but uh, this is going to be a five part. Like th this final bit, this final like whole thing with the tower, with the goddess tower here in CN is one of the biggest undertakings that you will ever experience in Fire Emblem. They call it the Tower of Di Guidance. I call it the difficulty spike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. That must be the Tower of Guidance. It's actually kind of beautiful. It feels calming somehow. Let's hurry, Ike. I can't imagine that the glowing is a good omen. We're running out of time. Yeah, so luckily most of the city is abandoned besides the tower itself. Yeah. The city gate is shut. I guess we'll have to force it to get to the ta- Ah! Uh, oh? Ah, oh, oh, Skrmir! You, you guys made it! Skrmir, I didn't realize your group had already arrived. Yes. We've been here for quite some time. I've been itching to go inside and see what the bad guys have waiting for us. Skrmir listened to reason, however, and agreed to wait here with us. We know nothing about the numbers or the strength of the enemy. It seemed the safest it seemed safest to wait for the rest of you to show up. We pitched tents outside the gate. Hello, Makaya. Any word from Yune? She came back to me a number of times during our trip, but nothing for the past few days. I see. Do we know where Tabarn and Alinsia's group is? No word yet, no. Ike, it's a waste for us to just sit around waiting. Why don't you and I have a look inside? Okay, so yeah, we're not at the tower yet. We're at the city, uh... We're at the city gates. Yep. Wait, what's happening? Get ready for an attack, people. <laughs> oh, hi. The path's been cleared for us. Kenegus, what are you doing here? In an occurrence, in an occurrence I'm told is increasingly common. We heard a voice in our dreams and followed it here. I'm sorry, give me one second. <coughs> you good, man? Yeah, just, of course I got a scratch in my throat as soon as we started recording. Of course. Of course that's exactly when it happens. Oh boy. And Lord Tabarn, I should have guessed your group would beat everyone here. We joined up with King Canagus and mopped up the Disciples of Order around the capital. The only people left within the city are the ones that have been petrified. Good. I like air breathers with initiative. Oh, there she is. Yune. Here to give us our next instructions? Yes, good guess. Everyone, gather around. You'll all need to hear this. Good job, everyone. All three teams got here, and a little faster than I would than, than I thought you would. While you were all traveling, I went around recruiting more help including King Kenegus here. Unfortunately, it looks like Ash Ashura had the same idea. By the time I made my way to Goldoa, there was no one there. Well, what do you mean? Where were they? If you're saying what I think you're saying, then we could have a very big problem. Lots of very big problems. I don't know for sure, Tabarn. There aren't a whole lot of dragons altogether, but... It looks like every one of them joined Ashura. How? 
How could this be? I haven't seen them anywhere else on Tellius, so they must already be inside the tower. <coughs> Let's camp for the night before walking into Ashura's own home. <coughs> oh, Jesus. I've just, like, started dying. I don't know what. Jeez. Well, t take the time you need to get that out of your system now while we prepare, so... Excellent. We'll get you guys... We'll, we'll, we'll see you guys in a bit. <clears throat> We're almost there. Tomorrow we head for the tower. Do not worry, your majesty. We will be right beside you. Though long tested by the trials of the goddess Ashura, we shall overcome. And our mission will be laid to rest. Yes. What we do now, we do not only for the people of, of Crimea but for all the people of Tellius. Yes, we shall succeed. You are a courageous queen indeed. Who said that? Uncle Renning, are you all right now? Don't I look it? I stand before you in full health, thanks to your efforts, of course. Wonderful. I'm so relieved, Uncle. Duke Renning. Lucia, you have my gratitude for looking after Valencia so diligently. Bastion, Joffrey. Everyone, you have my sincere thanks. Please, Duke Renning. It is our joy to serve Her Majesty. Our loyalty extends beyond the Queen. Please do not forget that. Thank you. I appreciate your concern. Especially yours, Bastion. I stand by you, my lord. You have ever been my most loyal and clever confidant. Was it possible for you to acquire the things I desired? Indeed, my lord. For you, to whom I owe my mastery of disciplines esoterics and arcane, no task is too difficult. Your sword, your armor, and your faithful steeds stand ready, and the battlefield shall know your valor once more. You haven't changed a bit, Bastion. Always the clever one. Your praise is too much, my lord. Uncle? You intend to join the fight? Please, you mustn't push yourself too hard. My, how things have changed. Am I to take orders from my niece on what battles I am allowed to fight in? I'm not a princess to be coddled and kept safe behind the vanguard, Lizia. I am a knight of Crimea, and I will be one until I die. As long as I live, as long as I am able to walk, and as long as I draw breath, I shall fight. It is my duty. I understand. Swear to me, then. Swear that you won't die. That you won't ever leave me alone. I swear to you that I will never leave you behind. I swear it upon my pride as a knight, and upon my love for my country. Now, your majesty, please grant me the honor of protecting you in battle. Oh, uncle. You may have to compete for that role, I think. Duke Renning, I will not give up my place as the commander of the Royal Knights, even to you. Let's take it outside, then. Perhaps I'll remind you why you have never won a match against me. As you wish, Duke Grenning. I will also show you that I have spent three years preparing solely to defend the Queen from harm. I have made it my life. Uh, Uncle! And Joffrey, you too? Bastion, do something! Truly, I shall have to. After all, a match between such stalwart warriors needs to be judged. I believe I shall volunteer my services. Excuse me. Bastion! Oh, Your Majesty, let them be. Lucia... Are you siding with them, too? Doesn't all this remind you of a scene in Melior from years ago? Tomorrow is full of uncertainty. We may live, and we may die. Yet here we are, enjoying a little scene of high drama from glory-filled past. I'm glad of it. That's true. It's like a weight has been lifted off my chest. Why don't we follow them? We should enjoy our final night together. Of course, Your Maj Majesty. So on that regard, we have Renning now. Yep. Um, we we'll see where that goes. We sure have him. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. We have had quite the... We have had quite the unlucky streak with the Cavaliers. Yeah. Who knows where that's going to go, but we'll see. Yep. What can I do for you, Goddess Yune? You're very strange. What are you? That's a strange question, especially coming from you. Didn't you create us all? I didn't create anything, not Laguz nor Bayark. But I know what they are, because I've watched them change and grow over time. You. You're not something I've seen before. I'm the same as the girl you dwell inside. Oh. I thought 
Micaiah was the only one. She could hear my voice and sing the Galdra release. But I learned that others existed. There's that boy who's always with Ike. Or the little girl who stays with the Queen of Crimea. So, they're talking about Branded. The boy who's always with Ike is Soren. And the girl who stays with the Queen of Crimea is Amy. Yes. Khalil's daughter. Mm -hmm. there are se There are several in my village as well. They are my comrades. We all live under the same fate and carry the same curse in our blood. When you say these words, what do you mean? Why are you cursed? It means that we carry the blood of both Bayork and Laguz. Bayork call us branded, and Laguz call us parentless. Does that mean your parents are Bayork and Laguz? Not always. It means that Laguz and Bayork mixed blood somewhere along the line. Bayork and Laguz rarely associate in that way. For them to conceive a child together is an even rarer fate. What's strange is that the child bears no Laguz characteristics, it's just a normal Bayork infant. However, the Laguz blood lies asleep, waiting in the child's veins. Oh. One day the Laguz blood shows itself, marking the child's body with a brand. How old is that girl, huh? I don't think she's as young as she looks. The other curse is that we age differently from Bayork. It depends on what Lagu's blood the child has, but it always slows how fast we age. Micaiah says that's true. She's listening to every word you say. Please, continue. The Lagu's blood gives the branded unnatural powers. Bayork fear and distrust us because they can't understand those abilities. The Lagu's are even worse. They treat us like we're phantoms, refusing to acknowledge us, as if we don't even exist. I see. It's easy to hide among Bayorks. You just cover the brand, avoid getting close to anyone, and never settle down, pretending you're normal. The Lagoos are different. They can sense what we are. They have an instinct for it. Not all Lagoos know for sure, but the sharp ones figure it out instantly. Others just feel uneasy around us. Some never figure it out, but they're surrounded by ones who do. Either way, the, the Lagoos would never talk to us voluntarily. Why would you pay attention to someone who doesn't even exist? Why? That doesn't make any sense. How do things get like that? I would like to know that as well. It's said that a union between Lagoos and Bayok is a crime against the goddess. That's what we've always been told. That's silly! I've never heard of anything of a sort. <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's all been a lie. For hundreds of years, we've faced persecution, abuse, and isolation. And for what? A lie. What's not to laugh about, huh? <laughs> What's happened? This is all wrong. How did history get so distorted? Was it at a particular place and time? I don't understand. I've been asleep for too long. Whoa! Yeah, um... Whoa! So my guess is that, um, the Church of Benyon, at some point, to further separate Bayork from Laguz, said that Branded were affronts against the goddess. The goddess has had nothing to do with this. Because, like, Ashura doesn't have a problem with Laguz. She seems to hold them in the same regard as Bayork. Not to beat an old horse, or not to beat a dead horse here, but the Benyon Church needs to calm the fuck down. Yeah. Well, yeah, gods don't create prejudice, people do. Ugh. Almeida, you're safe. Kurthnaga. Almeida, what's wrong? You're so pale, and you've grown so thin. Oh, Peleus. My little Peleus, why? Tell me why! Almeida. Almeida, you have to pull yourself together. Uh, Prince Kurth, are you there? I'm busy, Aina. Oh, it's Aina, okay. Okay. I'm busy, Aina. Stay where you are. Oh. Aina, it's been a long time. I felt your presence nearby, but you never came to see me. Lady Almeida. I understand that you don't want to see me. I'm sure you hate me for what I've done. My brother Rajayan, your betrothed. He died because of me. 
Don't. It's not important. That's all in the past. What? How can you pretend like nothing happened? You can't! I know you hate me! You have to hate me! Go ahead! Blame me for what happened! Insult me! Do anything, but you have to hate me! I don't hate you, Almeida. Rajayan made his decision. He gave his life to save you and his little nephew. Did you know that? He decided to sacrifice himself to protect you. I can't blame you for what Rajayan decided to do. That would mean insulting my beloved for his sacrifice, for his nobility. <laughs> Prince Kurth, my grandfather is here to see you. The king knows nothing of his visit. Nasir is here? Oh. Prince Kurth Naga, I'm glad to see that you are safe, and Lady Almeida as well. It has been a long time. We haven't seen each other in over 90 years, I believe. Nasir, you returned to Goldoa? Yes. Nasir, I need to know something. Why has Goldoa sided with Goddess Ash with Goddess Asherah? What is Father thinking? The Laguz and Bayork have joined together to save the petrified. Why hasn't Goldoa joined the effort? As you wish, Lady Almeida. Are you aware of the fact that everything that's happening is due to your decision to leave Goldoa? What? Explain, Nasir. King Degencia forbade the Dragon Tribe to use our transformation for the purpose of war. Almeida, you left because you did not agree with this policy, did you not? That's right. Shortly after you left Godoa, you met Ashnard and Dayan and were united with him. However, your union begat a child of tragedies. Chain. Uh, uh, oh. Your union begat a chain of tragedies. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> Did you know that the Red Dragon Platoon, which went in search of you, was captured and turned into feral ones by King Ashnard? I, I had no idea. It's, yeah, I think all the feral ones that were dragons were all red dragons. Yeah. <clears throat> Ashnard needed Goldoa to get involved in his war. That's why he did everything in his power to provoke King Degencia. Most of you have never fought in a war, but even more than other Lagoos, the Dragon Tribe loses control once they taste battle. Oh. Near the end of the war, we found out that Prince Rajayan could not be saved. I thought the king would surely go on a rampage. At the time, we had no idea that Lady Almeida was still alive. The king thought he'd lost not only dragon soldiers, but also his children. If the war had ended any later, had Ike not killed Ashnod, Goldur would have joined the war, and we would have started killing. We would have destroyed the Dayan army, its co-conspirators, everyone. We would not have stopped until the continent was ashes. Then the spirit of chaos would have spread across Tellius, awaking the goddess and destroying the dragon tribe. That was the danger we faced in the Mad King's War. But Ashnard was defeated, and Rajaon regained his sanity thanks to the songs of the Heron clan. <laughs> we escaped annihilation once. We took Prince Rajayan's body back to Goldoa, and the king did not shed a tear, nor fly into a rage. He endured his loss by himself. He endured for the sake of his last child, and for the sake of his people. Goldoa remained neutral. Father. But now, all that effort has been wasted. The war between the Laguz Alliance and Benyan has spread through Dayan and Crimea. And to top it all off, Goldoa can no longer stay neutral because of what Prince Kurth Naga has done. You're saying this is my fault? That I've started a war that my father tried to avoid? No, Kurth Naga, this was my fault. You fought because of me! This was not Prince Kurth's fault. Besides, the goddess Yune was not awakened by chaos sweeping across Tellius. She was awakened by the Galder of Release. By a Galder? Are you certain? Yes. That was what Sir Ike said. That's... very strange. Nevertheless, the end result remains the same. Goddess Asherah has rendered her judgment. The Laguz and Bayork must follow her decision. What? Nasir? I've come here as a favor to the king. Prince Kurtnaga, you have to return to us at once. If we just accept Asherah's judgment, we'll all be turned to stone. 
that's the end of history as we know it. Do you expect me to just lie down and accept that? How can I? What you're asking is insanity. I won't do it. And you, Aina? I feel the same as Prince Kurth. Then I have nothing more to say to you. However, I hope to avoid fighting my own people if that at all possible. Nasir. What will you do on the battlefield, Kurth? Will you face your father as an enemy? I will do whatever I have to. Ow. Yeah, it, Shh. it's getting heavy. Ow. You know, I kind of appreciate how stern Nasir is about the whole situation. He basically came here to be like, no, feelings aside, th th now's not the time for pleasantries. Yeah. You guys messed the fuck up. Mm hmm Ouch. Ike, I have something to give you. Hey, this is... It's called Irvan. If I remember correctly, I borrowed it from your father's grave. Why? Honestly, I have no idea. But I felt a sudden urge to visit Grail's grave in the morning of our journey. When I told Gifka my idea for a little side trip, he said he thought the same thing. I believe we were guided to your father's grave by a divine message from the goddess. When I saw your father's axe, I was convinced that I had to take it to you. I felt that's what your father would have wanted. Maybe he and mother are looking over us from, from are looking over us from somewhere else. <sighs> All right, it's my father's, so it's only right that I take it. We got we have Irvan. Irvan. So yeah, um, we were kind of like uh, we were not we were kind of avoiding the whole thing that I can use axes. Yeah. Now, not really a way to avoid that. We're using Irvan. Yep. Volk. Over here. Looking for you is like. Looking for you is still like trying to find a spill trying to find spilled ink at night. It's part of the job. Anyways, you've grown quite a bit since the last time I saw you. Everyone loves telling me that. You're starting to look like Grail. That might be true too. He is my dad. I didn't expect to see you here. Did someone from this camp hire you? Sure did. I see. It's good to have you on our side under any circumstances. Why did you call me over? I have to return something to you. What the? What's all this money for? It's the 50,000 gold you paid me the last time around. Well, minus my pay, expenses, and that sort of thing, of course. Even so, there's a lot here. Well, the contract ended sooner than expected, I guess. You did a lot for us back then. I didn't even get a chance to thank you. It was a job. There's no need to thank me. I know. But if you hadn't told me the story of my father, I would have never known about his past. So, thanks, Volk. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, you have your money back. See you later. Did he really just get embarrassed because I thanked him? What a weird guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a little bit of humanity in Volk. Yeah. It's actually kind of cool. Part of the money back from hiring him in the last it game. It all comes full circle, baby. And here we are. Sorry, I've been playing. Oh my god, I've dude, been, no. I've been playing Forgotten Land. Don't, don't freaking bring up that <laughs> trauma, alright? <laughs> my god. Um, and by the way, just so you guys know, um, if anyone ever asked, Oh, hey, Green Scorpion, why do you skip the preparations? Because this last one took an hour and a half. We were very diligent, but we have some cool skill setups. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's exciting. It's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Oh, no. Yune, what is it? What happened? Ah, uh, the bloom. Ooh. This isn't good. These soldiers, we've killed them already. They've been reborn in flesh, but not spirit. Brought back from the dead? A miracle of the goddess. A blasphemy, you mean? How could the goddess of order violate the most fundamental natural law? Philosophy later, everyone. They're about to attack. So it's always been my thought that, like, 
everybody you don't bring into the end game is like out here holding holding the line and doing yeah. things like this. Are you all right? Those dead soldiers really got to you, didn't they? We can't win. All we do is kill the flesh, but she brings the flesh back. We need more time. No, there is no more time. Everyone else will be turned to stone and I'll be lonely forever. There's nothing more I can do. I failed, I failed. Yune, get a hold of yourself. Ouch, my ears. What was that for, you big bully? Who do you think I am? Yune, Yune, the goddess of chaos. The warm-hearted being whose courage and love gives us the will to go on. Ike, thank you. As things stand, we can't bring everyone into the tower. We'll need support here to hold this position. But at the very least, how many are we going to need inside? They'll have much stronger forces inside the tower. Not to mention Ashura herself. We'll send in our best eleven. Oh, and we'll want the two dragons. And one from the Heron tribe. And, uh, uh, the Empress. Plus, it wouldn't hurt to have self. Understood. That's everyone. I'll gather them together. And once we get inside, you can leave most of the fighting to Micaiah. Alright. Oh! Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yep. I didn't know we were doing this now! Yeah. We're doing it right now. Oh, sweet! So... Um, one more promotion before we enter the, uh, tower. In fact, I think this might be the last promotion of the game for us. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Oh, and there she is. With the red. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, Light Priestess. Look at that outfit! Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love it! Makai gets all the cool outfits. Yeah. They really showcase how good these look in Fire Emblem Heroes, too. Yeah. Something like this should work. We're ready. Are we ready? Alright. This is it. So, John and I spent the last hour yeah. preparing and picking our units. I know it says 16 up there, but after we choose, then it'll assign us our Heron. Yes. So, and we'll really, have 17. The only one we have is... Raphael. Yeah. All right. So, um, we basically did a bunch of inventory, a bunch of skill uh, management, and a bunch of debilitating. Along with these six, we've chosen the remainder of our team. From here on out, this is the team that we're going to be using for the rest of the game. I think you meant uh, deliberating. He said debilitating. <laughs> deliberating. Sorry. It, it, it's just a kind of funny thing to to use right now. <laughs> It is. I mean, debilitating is also another thing, because, <laughs> we had Jesus a, Christ, this is a lot. <laughs> we had a few drinks. <laughs> no, we didn't. No, we didn't have any drinks. That, that, that's what, to me, that's what, like, debilitating would have been. I gotcha. Honestly, I could use a drink after this. Yeah. But here we go. So, our team, ladies and gentlemen. Marcia. Marcia for Endgame. Sheenan. Where's the rest? Mist. Soren. Boyd, Nephany, Tabarn, Alincia, Volk, Kenegus. That's it. And that's it. This and, and, and Raphael. And be. Raphael. Once uh, we get into the uh, once we get in into the spot. But yeah, this, ladies and gentlemen, is our end game team. Yep. Um. We definitely had to uh, compromise on some things. Oh, absolutely. Like, I really wanted to bring, um, like, I wanted to bring Gatry. I wanted to bring Har. Yeah. I, I wanted to bring Mia, man. Mia for Endgame. I wanted to bring Stefan. I want, like, yeah, but honestly, race. like, in regards to swords, uh, you can't beat Ike. You really can't. We were kind of close to bringing uh, Renning, actually. Yeah, because we don't really have any, ca any like, paladins on this team. Yeah, none of our paladins have really been impressing us lately. And the only one that could have... Well, she's out of commission now. Yeah. So, yep, this is our team. I think it's a good team. I think it's a good team, too. The only... 
I think the only other one that we were de that we were uh, deliberating on bringing is uh, Bastion. Bastion but, was very close, and at the last second, we switched him for Volk. We switched him for Volk and Marcia specifically. Volk yeah. because Volk proved like in that last chapter that he is more than capable of taking on anything we throw at him. And Marcia specifically because we need some more flying support. Yeah, flyers and Kanto. Mm hmm As for as for everyone else, Sheenan, Mist, Sorn, Boyd, Nephany, these guys are the S team. Yeah. Alright. I think we're ready. Yep. Outfit. Oh. Uh, oh, I see. We, so we can do all that. We now. did all that. <laughs> yeah, we did all that just now. Yeah. So we're good. Here we go. Alright. Everyone's almost ready. Who would you like to bring from the Heron tribe? What choice yeah, do we have? Only one choice. Raphael, would you join us? Of course, I am honored. All right, Tower of Guidance, here we come. In the past, I've used all three Herons in the end game. You know, it's not. It, it's just kind of choosing your preference. Yeah. It's so quiet. Is the goddess here? Uh-huh. She's at the top. Be careful, everyone. This tower is Ashura's home territory. She's certain to have her most powerful troops waiting for us up ahead. We must proceed with the utmost caution. Hmm? So, you were companion to the very first Empress Altina. I am honored that you have chosen to speak with me. You would trust in the word of a stranger? Yes, I can see inside you. I know you cannot speak lies. Is it possible? Do you share some aspect of my power? I do, as did my mother. Generation after generation, each apostle has been blessed to hear the voice of the goddess. We know of impending disasters, how crops will fare. All revelations originally intended for you. The children of my union with Altina. I had no idea. Please, look at this. That mark. All of the apostles have borne this brand. It is our greatest secret. The Senators must never know. Because of this brand, I thought that I had been born of some great sin. It plagued me always. Guilt tore at me every day as I hid my mark from my people, deceiving them constantly about my true nature. Oh, child, how can I apologize to you? And yet now that I've met you, I understand. There is no shame in my heritage. None at all. I will not live in hiding. I will reveal to the world that I am one of the branded. They must see there is no shame in who I am. No, you mustn't. You don't understand the danger you will be placing yourself in. Oh, but I do. The Senators will do their utmost to rally the people against me, as they did when I freed the Lagoos from slavery. But I will not be deterred. If I am to lead this nation, I cannot allow it to be corrupted by prejudice and hatred. I can put the life the Goddess has given me to no greater good than this. Such determination. Your eyes. They very much resemble Altina's. I will stand before my people and proudly proclaim the truth. And then I will guide them to a just and honest future. This is my promise to you. Thank you. Your strength of will, the truth that guides your life. You have shown me the way back to myself. I shall return to Goldoa and tell my friends of you and your actions. I will tell them that Laguz and Bjork may once again live together in peace. I will tell them that there is hope. Thank you, Father.
father of my mothers. I strive to be worthy of the gift of life you have granted me. So I believe that's a conversation between... Well, I don't know if I should reveal who the guy is, but I think that was Sonicky's mother. Um, I believe so, and the other guy, we know who that is. Yeah. What was that? Someone's... Was it someone's memory? What is it? Sorry. Oh, uh, I... Don't worry, it was nothing. Alright then, our path leads through that door there. Oh, boy. Well, well. Apostle Sonicky. What a surprise seeing you here. Frankly, I'm amazed that you of all people would dare to set foot inside the most holy tower of guidance. Lacane, we've been looking for you for a long time. You bound day into your awful pact, hounded noble King Peleus, and stole countless lives in your appalling war. You are beyond redemption. Beyond redemption? My, that does sound dreadful. Whatever, whatever will you do with me? Oh, and let me remind you, the blood pact is still in effect. You would do well to remember that. I think you know what will happen to the people of Dayan if you should dare oppose me. Enough! We fear your threats no longer. No more will we bow to your every whim. Now that we found you, we will exact justice upon you, then destroy the blood pact itself, ending its power over us. So you figured it out, did you? <laughs> it matters not. This changes nothing, do you hear me? Here is the scroll for which you've been searching so diligently, right here in my hands. <gasps> and yet, none of you will ever lay one grimy little finger upon it. I have been blessed by the goddess herself. Her protection will not allow you fleas to even approach me. Lacane, cease this travesty of virtue at once! What have we here? Oh yes, the Apostle. Excuse me, child, but I had completely forgotten you were here. Since you've deigned to grace us with your exalted presence, dear Apostle, let me share a bedtime story with you. The year was 640, Benyon era. The Empire had been without an Apostle for 15 long years. The senators were being constantly harassed with complaints from the people. There had been nothing like it in history. The voices calling for young Sonicky to be crowned grew louder every day. You had just turned five years old when the Senate welcomed you to the throne as the new apostle. Ah, but my young mistress Sonicky, what a difficult child you were. You threw tantrums, you screamed and cried constantly. Your conduct was hardly befitting an empress of Ben Yon. Everyone was at a loss. You wouldn't even stop mewling and crying during official proceedings. But then along came our youngest senator ever, Seferin, Duke of Persis. When he took you in his arms, you immediately stopped crying. You even smiled. We had to take advantage of this obvious miracle. In an unprecedented move by the senators, we elevated Seferin to Prime Minister, keeping him serving as close to you as possible. This plan, radical as it was, proved far more effective than we dared dream. A young, handsome prime minister and an adorable moppet of an apostle brought the people's support to incredible new heights. Apparently, the common citizenry is gullible enough to blindly follow any leader who is sufficiently attractive. Enamored as they were, no one ever seemed to care whether or not you could hear the voice of the goddess. With the new apostle and prime minister, the political landscape became unrecognizable. Even in the face of overtly unreasonable legislation, the two of you would stand on the balcony. A smile and a wave later, the people would cheer and go on with their happy lives. It was too good to be true, however. Both of you were only meant to be puppets. Each year you interfered with our government more and more, imposing your soft-hearted ideals over our sovereign rights. Were such trivialities as Lagoo slavery and the Dayan occupation worth making issues of? The pair of you were becoming an increasingly bothersome thorn in our side. And then this war against the Lagoo's forces. <laughs> you were so far as to expose our previous indiscretions and demand reparations for the subhumans. 
This was unforgivable. Clearly, you both had to be removed. Seferin would be falsely accused and jailed, necessitating his removal from office. The Apostle would suffer a sudden illness and be excused from official proceedings, or so we intended. And somehow, despite the extraordinary plans of great men, here you are standing before my very eyes. If Seferin and I hadn't been freed, you were just waiting for your chance to kill us! Just as you killed my grandmother! Out of respect for the... It, oh, that was Sonaki's grandmother in the flashback. Not her mother. Got you. Um, so I think she was about to reveal to the world that she was a branded and what branded meant. And then Lacane and the and ministers assassinated her. There you go. Yep. Oh, and that is the whole assassination of the apostle. And Which they what, blamed on the herons. Yes, there we go. Yep. It all comes together. Out of respect for the imminently deceased. I'll be completely honest. Yes, you assume correctly. Your assassination and the plot to once again frame the Serenus Herons for it was entirely my idea. Yes, I thought as much. Impressive, Sonaki. Well, you were first when you were first crowned, you would have cried your little eyes out. You've grown slightly. Lacain, Duke of Gatos, before the thirty seventh Empress of Benyon. Prepare to be judged! An amusing game, child, truly. But you must know that there's nothing you can do against me. I am the greatest servant of the all-knowing mighty Ashura. I am her chosen champion! And you, Sonaki, are a pathetic wretch, mewling behind her pack of Dayan curs. Ashura's judgment is upon you! You will not live to be turned to stone. You will die here as flesh and blood.